Hello and welcome. Recently we featured the B-17 Flying Fortress and the B-36 Peacemaker and judging by the viewing numbers there seems to be an appetite for these American large bombers. Only fitting then that we progress to the B-50 Super Fortress American Strategic Bomber. This post-World War II revision of the Boeing 29 Super Fortress was fitted with more powerful Pratt & Whitney R4360 radial engines, a stronger structure and a taller tail fin. It was the last piston engine bomber built by Boeing for the United States Air Force and was further refined into Boeing's final such design, the B-54. The B-50 was in US Air Force service for nearly 20 years. After its primary service with Strategic Air Command ended, B-50 airframes were modified into aerial tankers for tactical air command as the KV-50 and as weather reconnaissance aircraft, the WB-50, for the air weather service. The WB-50 had an important role during the Cuban Missile Crisis when it monitored the weather around Cuba so that they could plan photo reconnaissance flights. Both the tanker and the air weather versions were retired in March 65 due to metal fatigue and corrosion. Development of an improved B-59 had started in 1944 with the desire to replace the unreliable Wright R3350 duplex cyclone engines with the more powerful four-row 28-cylinder Pratt & Whitney R4360 WASP major radial engine. The use of a new alloy of aluminium 75S rather than the existing 24ST gave a wing that was both stronger and lighter while the undercarriage was strengthened to allow the aircraft to operate at weights of up to 18 tonnes. This aircraft was designated the B-44 and was 100 km per hour faster than the standard B-29. At World War II's end, contracts were cancelled and Boeing's response was to rename the B-29D as the B-50. According to Peter Bowers, a long-time Boeing employee and aircraft designer and a well-known authority on Boeing aircraft, the redesignation of the B-29D to the B-50 was an outright military ruse to win appropriations for the procurement of an airplane that by its B-29D designation appeared to be merely a later version of an existing model. The first production B-50A made its maiden flight on the 25th of June 47 with a further 78 B-50As following. The program was unpopular with General Curtis LeMay, commander of the Strategic Air Command, as he believed that the B-50 was inferior to the Convair B-36 Peacemaker and was having little capacity for further improvement while requiring an expensive redevelopment of air bases owing to the type's undercarriage. To give the Super Fortress the range to reach the Soviet Union, B-50s were fitted to be refuelled in flight. Most of the B-50As were fitted with the early looped hose refuelling system developed by the British company Flight Refuelling Limited in which the receiving aircraft would use a grapple to catch a line trailed by the tanker aircraft which was normally a Boeing KV-29 before hauling over the fuel line to allow transfer of fuel to begin. Yes, truly. While the system worked, it was clumsy and Boeing designed the alternative flying boom method to refuel strategic air command bombers with most B-50Ds being fitted with receptacles for a flying boom. The B-29 and B-50 were phased out with the introduction of the jet power B-47 Stratajet. The B-50 was nicknamed Andy Gump because the redesigned engine nacelles reminded air crew of this chinless newspaper comic character popular at the time. To me, the cockpit has the look of a garden glass house. The B-50 carried a crew of eight to 10 and was capable of 634 kilometers per hour at 30,000 feet. Its range was 3,853 kilometers. 
The vast northern borders of the Soviet Union were wide open in many places during the early Cold War years with little defensive radar coverage and limited detection capability. RB aircraft of the 55th Strategic Reconnaissance Wing from Nebraska flew many sorties along the periphery and, when necessary, into the interior. Initially, there was little opposition from Soviet forces as radar coverage was limited and, if the overflying aircraft were detected, the World War II era Soviet fighters could not intercept these aircraft at their high altitude. The deployment of the MiG-15 interceptor in the early 50s made these flights exceedingly hazardous, with several being shot down by Soviet air defences and the wreckage being examined by intelligence personnel. RB-50 missions over Soviet territory ended by 1954 replaced by the RB-47 Stratajet, which could fly higher and faster. The B-50 was recognised as a stopgap measure due to its short range. The B-50's first difficulties stemmed from its bomb bay, which, like that of the B-29, was too small to house nuclear bombs. Strategic Air Command had no illusions, realising that the B-50, along with the B-36, would be obsolete by 1951. That the B-50 did not start leaving the Strategic Air Command inventory before 1953 was due to the production problems and many modifications of its replacement, the subsonic B-47. Of the 370 aircraft produced, just five B-50s survived, all in American aircraft museums. This includes Lucky Lady 2, the first plane to fly around the world non-stop between February 26 and March 2, 1949, in a circumnavigation that took 94 hours and covered 37,000 743 kilometres at an average speed of 398 kilometres per hour. It was refuelled four times in mid-air using the grapple line looped hose technique. The public relations exercise was to show that there was nowhere on earth where the US Air Force couldn't reach. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe and hit the notify bell to promote content.